Uh, I'm expecting to be sorry. Okay. Glory, we can't get you clearly. Come up again. Right, it's like we lost glory, we lost glory. Right, I see people are joining. I see Esther Mudoni Karibu Sana. We got uh, Quendo Charles and we got Makeduro Creations. Uh, I think maybe that's a name. That's his or her name. We got Faith Waidera. We got, uh, we got uh, Glory Rombora. And I know more people will be joining us as we discuss about social media today. I know almost all of us are in different social media platforms, be it Facebook, be it Instagram, YouTube, uh, Twitter, and many, many other platforms. And daily, or some of us, after every hour, we do lots of posts. And when you talk to some people, you'll hear he or him or her say that, you know what, I'm different from whatever I post. But if you thought uh, I'm the same, same person who posts these things, then you're wrong. But I know Pastor Bahati will be having lots of answers to our questions tonight. But before then, we could be hearing from uh, one of the people who has already gotten in here. Love that one, BS Kiyake Mekwaje, and maybe what he or she is expecting tonight. Let's have Mwenda, Mwendua Yvonne. Yvonne just joined. Yvonne, how are you? Hello, Yvonne. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes. yes. How are you? How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Okay, what are you expecting tonight? Okay. I expect to know more about the topic. Yeah, and learn more. So, so I thank you. Do, you. do you know our speaker tonight? No. His name is Pastor Bahati. You'll hear from him today. But thank you okay. so much for that. Thank you so much for that. Okay. Yes, I see more, more people are joining us. More people are joining us. And yes, we got one new person. We got Vicky Chemutai. Hello, Vicky. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I hope you are fine. Taurus is taking over the turtles. How has your day been? You may do with the turtles as you It has been good. All right. Yeah. Basically, you've got a lot of noise from your side. Yeah, I've moved from the interrogation. Why are you speaking from our topic tonight? Hmm? Hey. Pardon? I'm saying, uh, what are you expecting from our topic tonight? Uh, I'm just expecting to learn more, understand more on social media influence. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. Mm. All right, guys. So, Vicky Jemutai, allow me ask you to pray for us before we start the session. Okay. Yes. Uh, let, let us pray. Father, we bless you and we lift your name. Thank you for each and every one of us. Thank you for enabling us, Lord, to be here, even on, on this platform. Lord, bless us wherever we are. Thank you for our speaker of the day, Pastor Bahati, Lord. We know, Lord, that you're going to use him to speak to us, oh Lord. We thank you and we exalt your name and we ask for your guidance and be with us throughout this session. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Vicky. I, I see more people are joining us and I know more will be joining as we move on, but we will get started. I know most of us uh, have interacted with Pastor Bahati before, maybe ex except from the, the first years who are maybe interacting with him for the first time. He's a speaker who has come before at MCCU, 
there at school, and he has been so helpful to the main campus Christian Union. One thing I like about him is that uh, is this person whom you want, uh, as in you won't rehearse when you want to call Pastor Bahati. I remember the first time that I was given a, a task of calling a speaker, I, I really had to rehearse and I had to look for a serene environment. Back at school, I went to Ufungamano Auditorium. There was no person there. So I sat there just looking for a conducive environment, did some rehearsals, wrote what I, I wanted to tell the speaker. But uh, I must say that Pastor Bahati is different. You call him, he asks about your family, how your day has been, and that is so remarkable about him. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor, for that. Now, Pastor Bahati, uh, when you look at his educational background, uh, he got a degree in theology from Midwest University. He got also an associate degree from, of theology from Bible Training Center, VL, VLMI USA, Texas. He also got, uh, he's continuing with also a degree in counseling psychology from Daystar University. Now, Pastor Bahati is also married. Yeah, he's married to one Wambui, and he got a daughter called Chara, and he fellowships at, um, wait, is the founder and senior pastor at uh, Plural Ministry. And I know he'll be telling us more about his profile. And now, let me take this opportunity to welcome our speaker today, Pastor Kennedy Bahati. Hello, Pastor Kennedy. All right, Asante Sana, Peter. All right, thank you. Welcome. Asante Sana, I appreciate. Thank you for the invite again. It, it has been quite an interactive session with MCCU. And I believe that God is taking us to greater levels together as we work together as laborers in his kingdom. Now, let me just say, uh, as you've heard, uh, those are my name, and um, I'm honored to be here. Now, the ministry is called Christos Ministries. Now, when I sent you the word plural, it was to uh, make it plural in the ministries because I realized I had used uh, the singular form for ministries, okay? okay. I do, I do. So it is Christos Ministries. And thank you very much, Peter, for just coordinating us. It, it, it is a wonderful thing that you're doing. So Christos Ministries, actually, we started uh, reaching out on social media. So it's a ministry that was born during uh, the COVID-19 season. Because we thought to ourselves, how are we able to reach out to guys who are not going to church? How can we reach out to people who don't have places to fellowship? So that's how Christos Ministries was born. Uh, besides it having an online uh, engagement on a weekly basis, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, but uh, different people in those three days. We also uh, meet physically once a month just to catch up and get to know one another for those who may be joining us in the, for, the, for the very first time. So that's, that's what we are. So when, when I saw your call and you asked me to talk about social media and Christianity, I was like, wow, uh, this is very interesting. There's a lot to say, but I'll only say that which is needful, all right? Because I'm looking at time and I don't want to go against the uh, time that I've been given, the time limit that is. So let me just do a screen share so that at least we go straight to our topic today. So there we are. Kindly just confirm if you can see what I have shared on the screen. Confirm if you are able to see what I have shared on the screen kindly. Mm -hmm. well, it says uh, you are presenting, but we can't see what you're presenting. All right, let's give it a moment. What about now? From my side, I can't still see it. It's, it's visible. Oh, okay, okay. All right, I see Stephen Jarog is saying that he's able to see it. If you're not able to see what I'm presenting on the screen, kindly just uh, unmute your mic and just let me know. 
So we are dealing with social media and Christianity. Two things involved. Asante sana Nora Okello. I can see you are confirming that you can see what I'm presenting there. Makeduro creation visible. Ah, great. So um, it's a confirmation that we can all be able to see what I'm sharing on the screen. So social media and Christianity. So definitions. Now, the reason why I decided to type everything I will say is so that in the event we have a problem, either on your end or on my end, uh, on matters sound, you'll be able to follow with what is written there. So definitions that we have there, the first term is Christianity. And so many people say that they are Christians. But uh, my question to you, do you understand what Christianity means? Do you understand what it means to be a Christian? And the first definition there I can say is that it's derived from two words. The first one is Christ. The second one is likeness or lifestyle or a way of life. Now, better put, it's culture. So you can see Christianity, it has Christ in it. And then you can see Ianity. Ianity has to do with likeness or lifestyle or the way of life or culture, the norms of a particular group of people. So you can see very clearly that that is what the word Christianity means. So in short, definition as a whole is that to be a Christian or Christianity signifies to live a life that is governed by Christ. Christ likeness, all right? Please understand that, Christ likeness. And then the other thing that I would love to say is that Christianity is also a life that is governed by Christ, all right? So a life that is governed by Christ is a life that has submitted itself to the word of God. All right? So that is what Christianity is all about. A life that is governed by Christ is a life that has submitted itself to the word of God. So when you claim to be a Christian, in short, what you're saying is that your life is governed by Christ because you have submitted yourself to the word of God. Now, the other second uh, term that I want us to look at is social media. So we've said Christianity has to do with two words. The first one that we talked about was Christ and likeness or lifestyle or a way of life or culture. So we're talking about social media, so that at least when we're talking about Christianity and social media or social media versus Christianity, we understand these terms. So the first one derived from two words. The first one is social. And when we're talking about social aspect, we're talking about interaction. And this interaction is based on various types of relationships. We have friendships, acquaintanceships, and intimate relationships. So please master that term social because if you don't get that word social you will not understand the rest of uh, our topic today the second one there is the term media now please understand the word media means medium or a channel or a means by which something flows so we talked about interaction based on various types of relationships but now we are talking about media and we say that media has to do with a medium or a channel or a means of flow okay so uh, all of you maybe you have a tv screen and you can tell what is on channel one channel two channel three right there's a media house but it needs a channel by which it can transmit its content so when you're talking about that the simplest definition the simplest definition is a platform that has been provided for something to happen, all right? So social media is a channel or a medium or a platform on which various interactions are carried out. Now, I want to say that again. Social media is a channel or a media or a medium or platform on which various interactions are carried out. Now, what are the benefits of social media? I'm going to talk about two main ones because there are so many, and I don't want to get out of topic because of trying to talk about the benefits. The first one is that we have a faster, easier communication. No need for physical movement is required. And a good example is our meeting tonight. 
Some of you are watching us, uh, not even watching us. Some of us, we are interacting with one another from either Nairobi Metropolitan or in a different county. You see, we did not need to move physically, but we've been able to meet faster and easily in our communication today, in our association today. So that is the first benefit that we have when it comes to social media. Now, the second one is networking and partnerships, all right? So social media helps us connect easier than ever before. And still, a good example is our meeting tonight. And you see, it's based on networking and partnership with Main Campus Christian Union and Christos Ministries International. So remember, master the word communication and also networking and partnerships. This is very important, all right? So, um, Peter, I'll ask you just to check the text messages in case someone has any question. I'll be able to attend to it if it is very needful on this matter. So, the Christian and social media. The Christian and social media. The first point I want to say is this. We need to understand that social media is a world by itself. It is a world by itself. It's a very big world, in fact, because the amount of content that you find on, so on the social media, go to Google and just Google any word, is going to make sure that you <laughs> have a variety of results out of the search that you've given. So it is full of content or material that is readily available, all right? And this content has been posted either by you or someone else. Now, let me give you an interesting uh, truth. Go on Google and search your name. <laughs> You'll be amazed if you've ever uploaded any photo, eh? either on Facebook or any other platform with your name on it, it's going to bring you up, all right? Just try and see. You'll be amazed. In fact, I searched my name and I was Surprised that it brought forth a photo that I had lost a long time ago. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. At least I have the photo. Now, I, I was trying to think, what if what I posted a while back was not something that was pleasing to God? But you see, you can always delete it. There are ways that you can get to just clean that up. Now, because you are born again, your involvement on social media should reflect the values and the standards that reflect Christ. Now, remember, guys, we already defined what Christianity is. And we say there are two terms involved there. We have Christ and we have likeness or a lifestyle or the norms by which people are governed by. All right. So because you are born again, your involvement, please master this word that I'm using here, involvement, your interaction on social media should reflect the values or the standards that reflect Christ Jesus. Now, let me say this. Philippians 1.27 says this. Only conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. You see, it says only conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. The other scripture that I want to use there is 1 Peter 1.15. And it says, but like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves in all your behavior, because it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. And I want to just maybe uh, bring out a uh, definition here. You see the word behavior, I have used, I have used um, the red, uh, uh, I've put it on, on, on re uh, in red, eh? because the word behavior signifies in all manner of life. It doesn't mean just on social media. It doesn't mean just on Sunday. It doesn't mean when you're in the university. It doesn't mean wakati ukonyumbani. You know, it means in all manner of life, whether you're married, whether you're single, whether you've decided you're going to marry this guy or, or, or this lady, in all manner of life, right? So please understand that behavior. Master that behavior. The first one that we looked at, Philippians 1.27, in a manner worthy, conduct behavior still. I don't like your conduct. When someone says that, they mean I don't like your behavior. In other words, the way you are interacting with us is not in a manner that is pleasing at all. So kindly note that, the, that what surrounds you will one way or another get inside you. Never forget that. What surrounds you 
will one way or another get inside you. And we see in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, that do not be seen. Bad company corrupts good morals. There's a reason why I am starting with these scriptures, so that when we get to the, uh, to the end of this session, we'll get to understand why some things need to be looked at, and we need to be very careful with how we conduct ourselves on the social media and the pages and the groups uh, that we are involved in. So bad company corrupts good morals. Please master that. Bad company corrupts good morals. All right? So guard your life against anything that does not please God. If you want to live right, you need to surround yourself with the right people or the right content on the social media platforms. And as I said, it's a world by itself. You're the one who chooses what to take. So if you choose to take that which is right, my goodness, you're going to live right. If you get exposed to that which is wrong or bad, you don't expect in return to have a good life. You're going to have the complete opposite. So you become what you eat. Process in, process out. You become what you eat. So uh, the social media platform provides uh, an environment where people get to feast or to consume different, kind of, different kinds of content. So if the process in, in what you are eating is good, the process out is going to be good. Now, there's a time I struggled with the F word. Now, I don't have to say um, what that word means, you all know when I'm talking about the F word, the cuss word, because you know me, uh, I, I, we were raised in a funny environment where you know, um, the F word was not a big deal. Like you just had to live your life the way you wanted it. So the F word was not an issue. So I give my life to Jesus and man, I'm praying and Tupac happens to show up in my prayer and he uses the words, the F words, and I really struggled until I realized the moment I change what I listen to, then the words that come out of my mouth are going to be pleasing to God. So you cannot be watching movies that have a lot of F words and curse words. And by the way, did you know when these guys are acting and they're calling the name of Jesus, they're just cursing using his name? And man, the Bible says, do not call the name of the Lord in vain. So uh, we need to be careful what surrounds us. You will become what you eat. If you eat well, you will have a good life. If you eat right, you're going to live right. So let me just leave that there. So how do you know what content or environment? When I'm talking about environment, you can see that the things that I've put on parentheses, that is the brackets there. We, we are talking about, when I'm talking about the environment, I'm talking about social spaces, I, uh, for example, groups, pages, or people. So how do you know what content or environment is pleasing to God? The first one, the measure of what is good or bad is always the word of God. You cannot define good outside God's word. And it, it's, it's amazing because human beings can choose that which is bad to be good. But you see, it doesn't become good. If the word of God uh, says it is bad, it is bad and it doesn't become good. So the only standard towards that which is good is the word of God. Now, if you do not know what the word of God says about various issues of life, you will not act the way he wants you to. Please always remember that. The reason why so many Christians struggle to live right is because they don't know what God's word says about that particular area that they are struggling with. So always take yourself back to the word of God. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, and I'm using the contemporary English version, everything in the scripture is God's word. All of it is useful for teaching and helping people and for correcting them and showing them how to live. The scriptures train God's servants, which you are, to do all kinds of good deeds. So the only measure and the standard for that which is good before the eyes of God is found in his word. Now, you must spend time with God through the study um, and application of his word and prayer. This way you live a victorious life. There's a reason why I am saying that. Because when it comes to 
our posts and our interaction uh, interactions on social media it needs to be founded on this that hey you are a believer who believes in studying god's word who believes in not only studying god's word but also putting action to his word which is application and also maintaining a consistent excellent i'm using the word excellent prayer life because just because you pray it doesn't make your prayer to be an excellent prayer right remember if you don't know god's will you cannot have an excellent prayer life now um peter kindly i'll ask for your assistance maybe you can read for us james chapter 1 21 to 22 uh james chapter it's there, James chapter 1, 21. I've already shared it on the screen, only that I just need right. to take a break, Dogo. Right. right. It says, Therefore, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness in humility, receive the word implanted, which is able to save your souls. 22 says, But prove yourselves doers of the word, and not merely hearers who delude themselves. So this scripture guides our interaction on social media not only on social media but also in every area of our life it says put aside very simple if you have a cup near you or you have a pen or you have maybe um, a laptop or your phone try to put it aside what does it mean you just <laughs> there's there's movement involved in other words you are setting yourself apart from that which is filthy and that which is wicked and in humility receive the word of god implanted which is able to save yourselves but prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves the word delude there means to deceive so your response on social media may it be comments may it be likes may it be posts they need okay your response on social media they reflect the state of your spiritual growth so uh, you must understand that that what you post is what people uh, uh, see you as. I don't know whether that is correct English. For those who are studying English, you can let me know. What you post reflect who you are. And there is no way you can say what I post does not reflect who I am. You may be familiar with people who lost their jobs or opportunities because their character was in question. And mostly you find they lost that opportunity because you know, nowadays, uh, people who are hiring, they search you out on all social media platforms and they check how you think. They scroll down to see how, because the easiest way they are able to tell who you are is the same way they can check your CV, is the same way they can check other social media platforms that you have on the various social media handles that are there. Now, this is not to scare you. This is just to help you to understand that people you you will hardly convince people that you are totally different from what you are signifying on the social media platforms that we have so they reflect the state of your spiritual growth so if you claim to be a christian think about what you're posting think about your comments think about the groups that you're in think about the pages that you follow if they are against the values and the morals that the scriptures are calling us to then um, there is a question mark there. Am I really what I claim to be? Because your life should not be different from who you claim to be. All right? So uh, let me just say that. And then James 1.25 says, but one who looks intently at the, at the perfect law, the law of liberty, and abides by it, not becoming a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer, this man will be blessed in what he does. Now, wonderful. Just look at that. Just look at that. We all want to experience blessings in our lives. But you see, God has given us his word by which through faith we can be able to experience the blessings that God has given unto our lives. But if we are not doers of the word, then that means that can be a good reason why we may not be experiencing the blessings of God in our lives. The word of God is meant to be acted upon, not to just be read not just to be quoted, right? The word of God is meant to be acted upon. So when it comes to getting addicted to social media, I don't want to address social media as being bad or evil. Please understand that. 
I don't want to address it like that. All right? There is good content on social media as much as there is bad content. That one we must know. And the question here is, what are you exposing yourself to? Because addiction comes because of exposure. You, can't, you cannot just say, I am addicted to alcohol, and you've not been taking alcohol. Uh, that's, that's absurd, actually. You see? So you become addicted to what you're exposed to. All right? You see, the other word that is used for good addiction is to crave for God's word. It's to hunger for God's word. Anything that is an addiction, that word addiction cannot signify towards something good. It means towards something that has enslaved you. But you see, when I'm talking about addiction, I'm talking about being um, uh, uh, in a place where you cannot do without something that God actually uh, has instructed to stay away from. For example, sex, alcohol, and all these other things that people can be addicted to. So if what you're consistently consuming does not benefit you positively, then there's a big problem. All right? There's a big problem there. So check consistently. What is it that you're consuming? If every day you wake up in the morning and the reason why you go to Facebook is maybe to follow uh, something that benefits you spiritually, then you, you, we cannot say that Facebook is... Actually, there is nothing bad. It's the consumer who may abuse that which uh, they have been exposed to. So, you see, guys, no one forced you to take alcohol. You took it yourself. And there is nowhere I have seen Pombe Kwe alive. Nowhere did Pombe come and tell you, please take me or I kill you. It's a decision that you made, all right? So the same way, actually... Uh, psychologists are saying if you wake up in the morning and the first thing you do is to go to the social media, you may mess up your day, especially if you're going to the social media is just to see what is happening. Already your mind becomes occupied. You're not able to plan your day. Something else has already interrupted your day. But people who wake up in the morning and they reflect and they take time in prayer, even if it's on Facebook, please remember that, or on WhatsApp, it depends on what you are consuming. So if what you are consistently consuming does not benefit you positively, then there's a big problem. Cut off everything that tends to deviate you from the right path. Ask yourself this question. How will what I am consuming help me to achieve my goals in life? All right? That, that's very important. Um, I am on Facebook. Trust me. And um, if, if you want us to become friends, that's, just check Kennedy Bahati. Uh, you'll see my face there. Try and see whether you can see my face on, on, on our Google Meet tonight. You can just see my And every time I click on any video, the suggestions are always suggestive. Not all, but at times you may just find like a funny video somewhere. And this is the question that I ask myself. Is what I'm about to see helping me to achieve my goal? All right. If it is full of curse words and things that are not <laughs> helpful, then I have to make a decision that, hey, I am not going to consume this. Remember, what goes in has to come out. So your life is a reflection of what you've been allowing yourself to be exposed to. So um, let me just stop there because time is already um, not on my side. Eh? Because I, I realize the 30 minutes, there's a lot to talk about. But let me get you there for today. Someone else, God willing, will take it from there. But for more teachings that can help you grow spiritually, kindly, just follow us on Facebook. Um, uh, my page is Divide the Word with Kennedy Bahati, or you can check out our Facebook page, Christos Ministries Inter International, or just reach out to us on WhatsApp on that number that is there. So, um, Peter, I hand over the meeting back to you in case there is anything else that needs to be addressed. But basically, that's all I could say for now. And that is not all that can be said. Let me just be clear on that, okay? There's a lot to be said, only that I said that which time could allow me to do so. So back to you, Peter, kindly. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Bahati, for that. We really appreciate it. It was so insightful, and uh, I have learned so much from you. And really, you, you say that uh, what we post on social media can even cost us our jobs. Recently, I was going through social media, and I realized that 
there's this lady was appointed to the wildlife and tourism board uh, her name was Pauline Joroge and uh, before that uh, she had made some uh, some post on Facebook and she was saying how Nairobi Park was useless and how it could be made into some other profitable use and Kenyans don't forget they remember that and there was an uproar on social media and she had to be fired so i agree that we really really need to uh-huh true to very true support. yeah sure now uh, if you have any questions you can keep them you can keep putting them on the chat box but maybe to start with pastor bahati there's this thing about memes yeah this this thing about memes that uh, people put keep putting them on their status what do you say about these memes <laughs> Now the reason why I'm laughing is because uh, honestly we have some humorous memes eh and uh, I've laughed uh, when I look at some of them you, you see as I said what matters is what is its content right what is its content does it uh, start the standard that the word of god has put for example uh let me talk about a meme what meme did i see mm-hmm. if if there's a meme that seems to be more of uh abuse or it has a sense of um perversity in it uh then I, i don't see how that can be edifying or how that can be pleasing to god so i don't want to say memes are bad because we can use memes to have a good time but what kind of a good time are we talking about right so if the content in this uh, uh stuff that is being posted glorifies god in other words it is good humor in it it meets the standard of the bible just you know there are good uh, there is good humor right there is nothing wrong with making people laugh but there is everything lo- wrong with jesting to jest means you're using uh coarse jesting tough jokes that have to do with people's sexual orientation or uh physical appearance of guys maybe umeona mtu akona kichwa kubwa and then you make a joke out of it and you know the bible says that these guys are fearfully and wonderfully made so i'll say this let's focus on the standard does it meet the standard that god has put and the standard is god's word right so if it doesn't please god then hey don't share it if you see it get rid of it don't don't even try to focus on it too much because sometimes it can get into you until it starts messing you up so that is what i can say i don't want to go with a yes or a no uh, response i just want to address the right thing back to you peter thank you thank you so much for that answer pastor bahari i think uh, it was well understood now as we wait for more questions uh tonight we have the director of MCCU ICT ministry now steven joroge uh, manages our social media platforms he is in charge of our facebook page our youtube channel and everything that involves uh, ICT in the main campus christian union now i'll invite uh, steven joroge to say hi maybe can comment on our on our meeting tonight and maybe if he has something to say in a minute steven joroge kindly Thank you thank you Peter. Uh good evening friends. Uh thank you Pastor Bahati for the message. Karibu sana. I I am sure if if this was a service a normal service at MCCO back at school it would have been quite extensive and a little more informative than it has been tonight but all the same it has raised the uh, very important matters that we need to think about when it comes to social media um, maybe my my question will be uh, adding to what i've just uh, written on the chat box uh, what would you say about you know following following celebrities and in this case most of the celebrities that we follow on social media 
um i wouldn't say they are christians maybe they are movie stars or or just uh, media personalities but we can't really place they are standing in terms of faith so how will we distinguish between who to follow who not to follow uh, uh, as well as comedians uh, in this case um the the people who like to spend a lot of time on youtube um what, what would you say about you know consuming comedy in, in this season and age yeah that, that, that's the much i have to say for now all right so um peter am i allowed to respond to that yeah exactly sure all right sawa sawa basi i want to share something on the screen and i want to share my my desktop so that at least i can share scripture there because i'm not i, I don't want to assume everyone has his or her own bible uh near so let me just join and share something here uh, remember the only way we can interpret life is through god's word and and i talked about this when i started off and i said that uh you know the the only measure towards that which is good is the word of god because god's word is profitable and i want to start with that um um mm-hmm. let me see second timothy 3:16 I, i believe we can all see what i've put on the screen there and i want to use the new american standard bible it says that all scripture is let me just highlight that so that at least for those who may not be able to see what i'm doing can now see them clearly that all scripture is inspired by god and profitable for teaching for reproof for correction and for training in righteousness please understand i'm using the word training in righteousness it means training in the right way of living that word righteousness means the right way of living so that the man of god the man of god here is not the apostle it's not the prophet it's not the evangelist it's not the pastor it's not the teacher it is the believer please so that the man of god may be adequate equipped for every good work or in all manner of life now There is something that Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1 and I want to go there Ch- uh, chapter chapter 11 verse 1 it says be imitators of me just as and I want to highlight that maybe let me just use uh, yellow be imitators of me this is Paul talking to the church of Corinth be imitators of me just as I am of Christ now maybe you can use King James version um let me see what it says there it is it says be followers of me even as i am of christ and then i want to use the amplified version kindly there's a reason why i'm using all this to bring out the different facets of this scripture it says pattern yourselves after me follow my example as i imitate and follow christ You see it's very clear the reason why Paul was saying follow me it's because there is someone else he was following Christ Jesus and we say that bad company corrupts good morals so who you follow <laughs> shapes your life it's very important for us to understand that and i i want also to comp- you see i'm responding with the scriptures because there is no other authority behind uh, our living apart from the scriptures and i want to use the um that one uh new american standard bible al halaiti for those who are not um maybe you are not able to identify where we are reading romans chapter 12 from verse uh 1 to 2 as you can see clearly uh peter are you able to see what i've put on the screen okay yes, sawa yes. sawa it says therefore i urge you brethren by the mercies of god present your body is a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to go which is your spiritual service of worship verse 2 it says do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of god is that which is good and acceptable and perfect so how do we know 
that which is good and acceptable and perfect by renewing our minds with God's word. And that's why we say the word of God is profitable for teaching reproof and all these other things. But guys, please understand this. When you are born again, there's a life that you said bye-bye to. And you can see Jesus actually saying this in Matthew 7, 13. And I want just to project that uh, very quickly so that at least I can just answer. Uh, I, I don't want to mention anyone who is a celebrity because uh, uh, I don't want to uh, mention names that can itaribia um, mutujina. But I just want to uh, you to measure their lifestyle so that you know who to follow if you have anyone in mind. It says, enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who enter through it. Guys, it doesn't mean the narrow gate is a hard one. It just means, hey, we need to consecrate ourselves. We need to say, hey, that's not my lifestyle. I want to be an imitator of Christ Jesus. So if the person you are following on social media does not reflect Christ, then you have an answer right there with the scriptures that I've given you. If the celebrity you're following, they, they, when you look at the movies that they act, it's full of fornication, adultery, sensuality, and sexual behavior, drunkenness, and all these other things. What does the Bible say about that? It says, put to death in Galatians chapter 5. You know, it says, now the deeds of the flesh, you can see them all here. Eh? It says the deeds of the flesh are all here. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like this, of which I forewarn you, just I have forewarned you that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So why would you follow people who practice this and yet claim to be a follower of Jesus Christ? You just need to make a decision. Hey, this is not the standard that I want for myself because this is not the standard that God wants for me. Let me just respond to it like that. Back to you, Peter. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Bahati, for that. We really appreciate for your time and your responses. MCCU says thank you. Karibu sana. See, time is much spent. Yeah, thank you. I see time is much spent, but uh, before we conclude, we got a person who really gave me the permission to speak here today, Lois Nduku. She's the chairperson of the orientation committee, and she could say hi to us before we finish. Yes, hi, everyone. And Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, Pastor Kennedy Bahati. We are really happy to have you today. It's always been a blessing. It has always been a blessing to have you speak to us when, while we were back at school physically. And now that you're still available for us online, we are really grateful for the partnership. May God bless you. Karibu sana. Asante. Yeah, thank you everyone for attending the fellowship today. I believe everyone has learned something because I know everyone is spending time on the social media. So you can just cross check yourself, examine yourself. Am I really consuming the right thing or I need to improve? We all know ourselves better and we can help ourselves be better and yeah, consume the right thing. Yes, God bless you all and have a good night. Thank you. Amen. Good night. Good night. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Lois, for that. Uh, tonight, uh, we've been joined by many, many people. We also had our chair. I think he's also still here. Our chair, Evans Mundi. Uh, Evans, we really thank you so much for being here tonight. Why if not for time? You could have said I, but uh, we thank you so much for being here tonight. And every other person who have had the chance to be here, the first years, we thank you so much. The continuing students, we thank you so much. Uh, may God bless you. May you have a fantastic night and a productive day tomorrow. But before we finish, I'll ask Pastor Bahati to conclude with the word of prayer.
Well, thank you. Thank you, Peter, again for the invite. I really appreciate it. Gaki, Doris, I've seen your comment. Uh, Karibu sana together with Stephen Jeroge and the rest who I know maybe they may not be able to give a response now. So um, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for these beautiful people. We are brothers and sisters in your kingdom. And even as we take time to work out our salvation, and Lord, I can tell it is with fear. That is a wholesome dread of displeasing. We love you so much that we want to live a life by your grace that pleases you. That even as we dedicate ourselves, uh, everything that surrounds us, everyone that surrounds us, Lord, we want to be meaningful to them through your word that they shall look at us and desire Christianity. And I pray that each and every area, that each and every person is an influence, that they shall continuously radiate God's glory in all spheres of their lives. All their needs, Lord, I present them to you. May it be financial, physical, spiritual, emotional, Lord. You know, you know them by name and you know their hearts. Philippians 4.19 says you shall meet them at the point of their needs. And I ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, because it is done. As we sleep, we rest. Amen. 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 Amen, amen. Okay, thank you. Okay. You can now leave your own pleasure. Pastor Bahati, say hi to your wife and your daughter.